Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Blood carries oxygen around the body to nourish every organ and every cell, but it needs a pumping machine to do so. That machine is the heart. When the heart cannot pump enough blood to the body, it could be a cause of heart failure. Moreover, insufficient blood affects the state of the organs. Heart failure is a condition or a collection of symptoms that weaken the heart. It can be acute or chronic. My guest is a consultant cardiologist at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Idiaraba, and a fellow of the Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, Dr. Oyewole Hushimo. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, first of all, let me confess. In the past, if ever I heard somebody had heart failure, I already assume that the person is dead. But it looks like it's not quite the case. So, what's happening in heart failure? Okay, yes, that's a very common misconception. Um, and it's because of the word in English, you know, failure gives uh, an impression of, you know, something is, has packed stopped up. working, has packed up, which is not really the case, as you mentioned earlier. Um, in heart failure, what is happening is that the heart is weak. The heart is uh, not pumping. Um, the, the heart is basically a pump, it's a, it's a muscular pump, and that the heart muscle has become weak and it's not pumping enough blood to meet the demands of the body. So it is. So the heart is not working well. It hasn't stopped working. Okay, it's not working well. Why would a heart lose its some of its pumping ability? Is it a function of age? So that means everybody should be sort of expecting it, or is there other things that are causing it? No, well, heart failure is, um, is, is caused by disease um, processes that, that, that occur. Um, it's not really aging. You know, of course, as we age, the, the function may decline a bit, but it doesn't cause heart failure. Aging on its own doesn't cause heart failure. It's usually caused by different diseases. In Nigeria, the commonest um, factor, cause of heart failure is, is hypertension. Okay. Hypertension has been going on for many years and probably not well controlled, and that has led to a certain problem. So usually, you could say you could think of heart failure as like the end result of practically all the diseases we have that could affect the heart. So when that so for every a long time, cardiovascular disease could be leading somebody yes, to, to heart, heart failure. failure. Yes. Heart failure is like the end of the road. It's like the, the end result of disease process that are affecting the heart over a long time. It could be hypertension, it could be alcohol intake, excess alcohol intake for a long time. It could be taking cancer medications. It could be having a heart attack. It could have been, a, having been born with a hole in the heart that was not corrected at childbirth and are allowed to affect the heart over time. So really, heart failure is like the end result of so many heart conditions. Okay, but you know, if somebody were to have a heart attack, it doesn't necessarily mean his heart will stop working. No. At what point do you begin to call it heart failure? Very good. Because, you know, uh, the, con the functions would reduce yes. after a heart attack or any mm -hmm. other thing. Yeah, that's very good. And also because heart failure also, oftentimes, they they, there's also a misconception between heart failure and heart attack, cardiac arrest, people mix up the terms. Now, what happens in a heart attack is that um, the, the heart muscle um, actually has vessels that supply itself. Looking at our model here, you can see... Um, yeah, vessels all over. Vessels all over. And these and are then, the greater vessels, And these right? are the vessels that take blood outside. They have, but these vessels, these ones here, are the ones that actually nourish the, muscle, the heart muscle itself. So what happens in a heart attack is, is that this, some of these vessels get blocked with um, become narrowed and become blocked with um, and then when that blockage occurs the 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 vessel the part of the heart the muscle that's supplied by that vessel dies okay so that's the heart attack heart attack is the death of part of the heart due to blockage of the vessel that supplies it so that's a heart attack now if a heart attack it depends on how serious a heart attack is if it's a very mild attack just affecting a very maybe just two percent of the heart or ten percent a very small percentage the body may be able to recover from that but if it's a very large area that that is affected then the heart begins to then it leaves a sequelae and then the heart the body is trying to adjust and then that now can lead over time to heart failure especially if for a very massive heart attack or repeated heart attacks we dispose somebody to having heart failure when you say sequelae what do you mean so meaning that um so of course once the heart attack occurs or any injury any insult the heart becomes weakened, the body, the, the heart cannot pump enough blood to meet the demands of the body. But then the heart, the body tries to recover, tries to adapt to this. So the body starts releasing chemicals to make the heart beat faster, okay. to overcome this, 
you talk, you talk so it's a compensation. Exactly, it's a compensation. So this compensatory mechanism initially could keep the person initially okay, but then this heart that has been injured needs to rest. It's like a dog or a horse who has a broken leg. That leg needs to rest. But you who is riding the horse, you may keep beating it to move faster so that it doesn't slow you down. But then that so the leg gets worse, gets worse and, and worse, worse and worse. So that's you probably pro lame the horse. Exactly. So that's what that's what's happening. So heart failure is like a it's like it's like a progression. So the body is trying to force the heart to do more than what it can do. And in in, the, in those chemicals that have been released, put more stress on the heart, and that keeps damaging the heart further. So so once the heart now becomes big, flabby and thinned out and all that, you say that now leads to established heart failure. So the person becomes, develops a weak and flabby heart that is not, a, not working efficiently, and that now leads to the signs and symptoms of heart failure. Okay, if we, if we look at this uh, model, well, people might not see it readily, but we know that the, the heart has four chambers. Yes. You know, upper and lower, left and right. Yes. What is the involvement of these chambers in heart failure? Because if, if I understand that the different chambers of the heart can be affected differently mm -hmm. in any sort yeah. of heart disease. So what is the involvement? Does it mean that all four chambers have a problem? Okay. Well, in heart failure, um, basically the, the, the two, they are, you have two small chambers, which are the back, which the viewers probably cannot see. And this Perhaps is you the, can raise it up. Yeah. And then so these, this is how the heart looks. This is how the heart looks. They have two smaller chambers here, which are like the entrance. They call them the atria. Okay. While these two big ones here, this is the left, this is the right. These are the bigger chambers. These are the ones that pump blood out of the body. Those you are the, the ventricles. Blood, the ventricles. So the, 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 the right pumps to the lungs, but the most important chamber is actually the left. Because the left chamber pumps blood to all parts of the body. Uh, you know, to, to, for the oxygenated blood. What the lungs has already oxygenated, the left chamber passes the nutrients to all parts of the body. The hair, the leg, the kidneys, all the organs are supplied by this left chamber. So this left chamber, especially in heart failure, this is the chamber that is most commonly affected and usually the first to start failing. So when this chamber becomes weak, flabby, and it's not pumping enough blood to the, to the rest of the body, that is really what happens in heart failure. And this chamber could be damaged by so many things, alcohol, hypertension, a heart attack, different things, and it can injure the heart. And once that, heart, once that pump becomes less efficient, then the rest of the body begins to suffer. And the person develops heart failure. The same okay, from what you've explained, this thing looks like a progression. Yes, the progression. It keeps getting worse yes, and worse. worse. Yes. Can a person have live with heart failure? Yes. Like, you know, somebody says, okay, he has heart failure, but he's been living 10 years, 20 years yes. with heart failure. Yes, that's going to happen. First of all, the signs and symptoms in, in many people actually come gradually. Sometimes patients present after two years of having been, been, been sick. Because okay, let's do that. Signs and symptoms. What are the symptoms of heart failure? Exactly, really? very important. Well, usually um, a lot of patients start telling you that they are not able to do what they usually do. Minimal activity gets them tired, weak, and breathless. They come out of breath, climbing steps, washing clothes, cooking, you know, and that keeps getting worse and worse until the person can hardly you know, walk a few steps. And that could take months to years to occur. And then another very important symptom is the lungs. The, the, what happens then? The lungs become congested and it gets filled up because the heart, if the heart doesn't pump well, the blood, the, the lungs suffer. And then when, once that happens, the person becomes breathless. The person starts, when he lies down, the person finds it difficult to breathe lying down and also persons can cough. And then another, the, the other symptoms that occur is because of pooling of blood in, in, different, in the venous, in the, in the circulation. And that can lead to what we call body, different body swellings. We call it edema. The legs is begin to swell. that the person can readily notice? Oh, yes. The, the, the very, for instance, the person's legs start swelling. And that's usually, many, for, many, for many patients, that could be the first source of alarm. Or when many people don't like, it's also a cultural thing. People don't like to see swollen legs. Yeah, especially so, women. Exactly. So their legs, legs, they cannot you know, put their legs in their shoes. And then the tummy starts swelling. And then this occurs leads to, to, to ecstatic embarrassment. And a lot of patients come to hospital because of this you know, swelling of the legs, swelling of the, of the stomach. So those are basically, so different parts of the body, especially the, the limbs. And in fact, if the person doesn't come on time, the whole body could swell up, even the arms, the limbs. And you could so have the swelling. person could come bloated. Bloated, exactly. That can happen. And what then, does that mean? Does it mean the person has toxins in the body? No, what that means is that, um, you know, the heart is a pump. So the heart helps to keep the circulation, you know, you know uh, moving. And then, you know, we have the... So when that happens, that pump stops working. That means some parts are starved, while some parts have too much blood because blood the pump retention. Retention, exactly. So, so in that, as those aspects, which are like the stomach, the, the legs, the limbs, the lungs, 
blood pools there and a fluid within the blood vessels enter the tissues. So that's okay. what causes the sweat. All right. So what are our modifiable risk factors? Okay. What can a person do to prevent heart failure? Very, very good question. The, the prevention of heart failure is precisely by preventing the causes of heart failure. And in this environment, as I said, the most important cause of heart failure is long-standing hypertension. So basically checking your blood pressure frequently, or if you're already hypertensive, taking your medications frequently, making sure you have regular health checks, taking your drugs and keeping your blood pressure at the normal level will definitely prevent heart failure from occurring. Because the damage the hypertension does to the heart, the thickening of the heart that are caused in hypertension, which leads to heart failure, will not occur if you control your blood pressure well. Other things, for instance, alcohol intake, excessive amounts of alcohol over a long period of time can damage, weaken the heart. We call it you know, alcoholic cardiomyopathy, where the heart becomes flagged because of alcohol insults. Of course, watching moderate intake of alcohol or avoiding alcohol entirely will prevent that. And um, other things, also heart attack can lead to heart failure. So controlling those things that could lead to a heart attack, such as you know, watching your diet, watching your weight, and then controlling your, if you have diabetes, putting it under control. These are things that, you know, that can lead to heart attack. If you prevent those things, then you know, those what we call cardiovascular risk factors, if they are also modified, smoking, for instance, you know, by preventing heart, heart attack, you're also preventing heart failure from occurring. You know, obesity seems to be a really huge problem, and it's getting worse in this country. Can we just take a moment to appeal to doctors to actually help their patients manage their weight? It, it doesn't seem to be a common thing that, you know, a, a patient wants to lose weight and enlist a doctor's help as in, can, how can I do this for the kind of person that I am? How can I actually lose weight to reduce my risk? Okay. You know, can we just take a moment to ask doctors, please? Yeah. I think one thing that comes to my mind is that um, losing weight kind of is also a multidisciplinary um, a multidisciplinary approach can be taken because some doctors perhaps may feel overwhelmed with the number of patients they are seeing because you know weight loss is, is a long-term thing that, that needs patients and you know care and all that so, so of course a doctor could can assist but also a doctor could also link you up with the dietitian for instance or could also link you up with a with doctor that has special interest in weight loss okay you know, maybe an endocrinologist or a metabolic physician but you have some clean, metabolic clinic right in my hospital we have a metabolic clinic where who want to lose weight come so if you go to a dedicated weight loss clinic because the, the doctors they are more motivated to help you and it's also their area of expertise or like somebody who is mainly treating other conditions and weight loss may not be his priority so that could also be an approach you know to actually for, to go to specialized weight loss centers that they, they will give you more time and attention or like a doctor who's seen so many cases and you know and then but of course every doctor can should encourage weight loss i'm not saying they shouldn't do that yeah because but somebody who but if somebody that. needs you know more patients and probably needs he needs more you know he could attention. Actually attention he could go to a specialist who who is focused on weight loss and that can help for cardiovascular diseases to be you know according to statistics the number one killer globally have have, have people have specialists you know sort of moved the focus of of um, policies towards non-communicable diseases because what i'm looking at is an, an emergency you know Nigerians do not know that these things, a lot of Nigerians do not know that these things are very dangerous. Imagine that if a person could, um, could keep a good weight, reduce drinking, eliminate smoking, you know, and control high blood pressure, a lot of heart attacks would happen. And a lot of uh, um, strokes would happen. So... That means by a lot of heart, heart failure will not happen. So, so what is policy looking like, you know, um, health policy looking like? Are you satisfied? Well, I think um, a lot can be done. Well, a lot is being done already, but I think a lot more can also be done. You know, there are different organizations that are involved in this, Ministry of Health, you know, we have the Nigerian Cardiac Society, the World Heart Federation, there are different um, bodies that are, that are looking and are actually raising that awareness of the fact that non communicable disease, that you have committees on this. But of course, more could be done. Also, don't, you have to realize that in Nigeria and many developing countries, we have a double burden. 
That is, we still, we haven't yet eliminated the communicable diseases. We still have a, a, a huge load of that. And then now we have non-communicable disease also rising. Okay, I, we have to go to break. When we come back, we can continue on that. Please stay with us. We're going for a short break. Welcome back. 0805-468-3514 is the number to call if you have questions on heart failure. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A. We mentioned acute heart failure and chronic heart failure. What's the difference? Okay. Um, acute heart failure is when the pumping activity of the heart um, or when the symptoms and signs and symptoms of heart failure occur very suddenly and rapidly over a short period of time, you know, which could be due to different things. For instance, the blood pressure could just suddenly go very elevated and that could just tip a patient who was otherwise normal before into heart failure. Just, you know. Wow. And then also heart attack, for instance, is a sudden thing. Heart attack can occur at any moment and the person could go into heart failure suddenly. So that's the acute type. However, the one that we see um, perhaps more commonly even is, is the, the chronic type in which it's due to, you know, disease processes that have been going on for months to years, like hypertension, like hypertension, maybe not so severe as to make the person go into acute heart failure, but high enough to cause damage to the heart over time, or somebody taking alcohol excessively over a long time, or, you know, different or something that has diabetes. Or, so when the, the, the signs and symptoms occur over, you know, weeks to months to years then to develop, chronic. then that's chronic. Let, let's talk to Patrick, who's at his solo now. Hello, Patrick. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Well, rather good afternoon, Patrick. What's your question? Oh, good afternoon. Sorry. Yes. Please, uh, I want to ask the doctor a question. Uh, um, a couple of years ago, I did an echo. And I was told that uh, I have a left ventricular regurg regurgitation. Uh, uh, we had a delivery on the eyes. Although I'm a hypertensive patient, I'm on my medication. Does that have anything whatsoever to do with the heart attack that you are talking about or heart failure? Would that have anything whatsoever to do with heart heart failure or heart attack? Thank you, Patrick. You okay. okay. I think he mentioned left ventricular engorgement. Yeah, well, I think he mentioned regurgitation. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I I think I, I have an idea. Well, I didn't get f fully correctly, but I think I know what he's saying. Um. Um. Well, well he, he wants to know if it's heart failure. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, well, um, what he has, um, like, because I don't have the full details of the results, but he's mentioned that he has hypertension and then he has one of, re one of the valves. The heart has four valves. Yes. And he mentioned a regurgitation of one of them. A, a regurgitation means that the, the valves of the heart are like doors. The, the heart has four chambers and you have, you know, like doors linking the flow of blood from one chamber to the other. So the, the, the valves are meant to allow blood to go in one direction, but they're not meant, and they're not meant to allow the blood to go back. To okay, where so it's coming it goes from. and so then the valve closes, closes exactly, so that it doesn't come, come back. back. So in his case, what likely is happening is that so the valve, one of the valves is leaking, which is what, what he mentioned as regurgitation, okay. which is what he said. So, well, yeah, so now that is something that um, is good. I don't think he's in heart failure. If he was in heart failure, he likely would know because he, the heart failure is setting when, if that, for instance, progresses, he has to watch it very closely. If the, if the leakage is very small, still very mild, and it's still an, enough time for him to you know, take his drug regularly, have regular checkup, and we could, he could still, we could still prevent heart failure from occurring. Okay. But if care is not taken, this regurgitation can become very severe. He'll be not taking his drugs, and then with time, heart failure could set in. So heart failure is really when the signs and symptoms appear, and when the heart has become significantly damaged. You could still have some slight, you know, damage of the heart, but it doesn't mean you're in heart failure. But it means you should be careful to prevent well, it. Well, if there's a leakage, that means there's an opening. Yeah. Can that be repaired? Yeah, it can be. But of course, if it's just very mild, we don't. We just watch it. It can be treated with drugs, taking your medications, or just being observed. Not every leakage so needs to be repaired. So it doesn't really close? It doesn't close. But if it's just mild, even some people, even everybody, normal people, 70% of normal people could have some small leakage. So it depends on how severe the leakage is. If it's just very trivial, we don't do anything about it. It's when the leakage has become like moderate to severe, especially, and it's also causing symptoms, or it's leading to heart failure. That is when we talk about repair or, or treatment. Okay, so so he has to just he should see his doctor. It may not be you know it may not be heart, heart failure, failure definitely, but, but it can lead to heart failure if care is not taken. The faster, the better, right? For um, intervention, definitely. So Patrick, do see your doctor as soon as possible to prevent heart failure. Now, acute heart failure. Does that go away? Does that stop? 
Okay. Now, that depends on what is going on. Because, as I said, heart failure in, in itself is not a diagnosis. Heart failure is like a syndrome of you know, something that's happened to the heart. So, the, really, it's what has caused that. You know, the, the, what has caused the, the heart to, to fail is what needs to be addressed. Now, if it depends. If it's just a sudden elevation of blood pressure, if that blood pressure is treated rapidly and the heart has not been damaged, that person may never have heart failure again. Okay, let, yeah. let's just quickly take Akko, who is at Lokoja, and then we can continue this. Hello, Akko. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Akko. What's your question? My question is, uh, I'm hypertensive. And, hello? We can hear, go on. I'm hypertensive and uh, I'm on drugs. I'm on drugs, and uh, for some time now, my my the the, 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 the blood pressure has been, been bad, kind of. Each time I go to the hospital, I don't get anything below 140-80. I keep wondering what the issue is. So okay. That's, that's, my, that's my question. I've run a series of tests. Do I have an appointment next month to meet with my doctor? So I, 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 I don't drink. My salt intake, I've been checking it and all that. I don't take fatty food. I exercise very well. So I kept wondering why it has not dropped from 140, 80. Okay. Thank you, Akko. I'll, I'll hand you over to the doctor. I'm sure age may have something to do with this. No, well, what he needs to, what he needs to see is doctor again and, and different. What, what um, clearly we need to, he needs to know, um, the drugs is taken. 140 you know. is rather high. It's high, yeah. So, but it can be, it, it's, it's almost, we want it to be below 140, 90. So he's almost there, you know, the control. So what he may just need is just for his drugs to be, to be, um, to be modified. Perhaps he needs an extra drug to be added to his combination. Sometimes it takes us a while to get it under control. Some people need two, three, or even four medications. Okay. So it's something that can still be addressed. I'm sure if he sees his doctor again, they look through his treatment, they could modify his drugs and, and achieve good control. So there you go, Akko. You can see your doctor and uh, possibly modify your medication because we don't want heart failure. Um, we were talking about uh, acute, acute heart failure, failure yeah. actually stopping. So this person who has had acute heart failure, maybe because of his blood pressure, mm -hmm. it can stop and go forever? Yes, I mean, that is if, if for some reason something has made his blood pressure to go so, so high to make the, the, the heart to feel acutely. If if that, can, that person, if the heart hasn't been damaged over time and that blood pressure is quickly addressed, he still has time to prevent another heart failure and he may never have heart failure again, as opposed to somebody. So those who become chronic is because the heart has become damaged to a large extent. But if it's just an acute thing and the heart is still functioning rather well, that's ac what has caused that acute insult is if it's addressed quickly, you know, heart failure could still be prevented, you know. So, but as opposed to somebody who has, whose heart has been damaged over years, of course, that one now needs long-term treatment. That person has to be on heart failure medications, most likely for the rest of his life. And like somebody who is just, or could be a pregnant woman, even some pregnant women go into heart failure because of the stress of pregnancy, the blood pressure goes up, or what we call preeclampsia, and they could have a transient heart failure, and they may never have heart failure again if that acute thing is quickly addressed. Unlike somebody who has had damage to the heart over time, that person knows obviously there's a permanent damage already there and the heart failure has to be managed over a long period of time. So potentially, and then also people with chronic heart failure can also have acute, um, what we call, worsening. You know, somebody with a chronic heart failure could present like someone with acute heart failure maybe because he's taking too much salt or maybe he has an okay. pneumonia. But in more. this case, he's, it seems he's doing everything right. So a visit to the doctor would make sense. Um, let's take Libby. Hello, Libby. Libby yeah, is yeah, calling in from Umbo. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Please, what can we use to check uh, obesity? Yeah, yeah. What can you use to check obesity? Okay. I'll let the doctor answer that question. That looks very right. Yes. <laughs> the question could be, how do you determine that somebody is obese? And it could also be, you know, what do you do to, to, to prevent or to check to, it from increasing? To check yeah. it. Well, it's, well, maybe we'll just answer both, no? Both. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, a common um, 
measure you will use to, to assess obesity is what we call the body mass index, which is just a relationship between your height and your weight. Okay. And you could even go online, there are calculators online, something you call you ask your doctor to check your height and your weight and give you your BMI. And, and based on the values, somebody who has a BMI of more than 30 is clearly obese. Between 25 and 30 is overweight. So that's a simple way of knowing if you're obese or not. And of course, to to control obesity is, is a large, large topic, but basically to keep fit, exert yourself, don't be sedentary, also watch your, watch your calorie intake and all that. Thank you so much, Doctor, for coming to the show. Okay. It was really wonderful. Thank you for being there with us, and thank you for asking all those lovely questions. Have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.